Although the original instrument had two VCOs and a single LFO, this is something we thought we could improve on, especially as on the original it wasn't really possible to program in, say, a filter sweep with a little filter modulation on the end. The question for us was really how to implement an elegant solution which we felt was in keeping with the original. And that's where VCO3 came into play. So the first thing I'm going to do is select a mono default patch. This gives us a basic sound where we can hear all our changes clearly. I'm also going to activate group mode simply because I want any changes we make on this SEM to be mirrored across all SEMs, even though we're only zoomed in on SEM1 and in monophonic mode. In SEM1 zoom mode, we can see VCO3. And the first thing to note is that this can be used as a normal VCO. Let's turn off VCO1 and then turn up VCO3 to hear the saw wave, the sine, and a 50% square wave. As per VCO1 and 2, the pitch frequency is adjusted by the top knob with the fine control in the center ring, coarse control on the outer ring, and stepped coarse via the right click. So there's our waveforms when used as a standard VCO, as well as pink noise if we turn the VCO level knob to the right. When using VCO3 as an LFO, the first thing we want to do is set the level knob to zero. And this is because if we have a waveform playing, we will get low frequency clicks from the LFO, which in this case we just don't want. So let's turn that off. Right, turn up VCO1 again. And put VCO3 into LFO rate via this switch. VCO3 can be used as a modulation source for VCO1 and 2 and the VCF by simply selecting VCO3 in these three switches. In this case, let's add a bit of filter modulation. So we select VCO3 here and apply a degree of modulation. Close down the cutoff and we hear the square wave modulation clearly. We know that we have the choice of sine and saw. And obviously we can alter the speed of the modulation via the frequency knob. We can also have the LFO rate synchronized to your host tempo but for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to use it unsynchronized. We can also use either of the two envelopes to sweep VCO3. And this is how we get to our goal of a sound with a filter sweep and the little filter modulation on the tail end. Because envelope one is essentially taking care of all VCA duties, I'm going to select envelope 2 in VCO3. And then I'm going to adjust the decay so it's nice and long. Then I'm going to crank up that res so we can hear the sweep. Which at the moment has sine wave modulation all over it. So to offset that modulation but retain the sweep, we simply move the intro knob to say something like 11 o'clock. So we get the sweep and then the modulation. Now we can alter the depth of that final modulation via the sustain knob here. And yes, that is a delay you hear when changing sustain level because that's exactly what happened on the original instrument. Now 
Now, as I said earlier, we also have VCO1 and 2 as modulation destinations. So let's apply something to VCO2. Firstly, we turn it up. Add a little bit of detune so it's obvious. And then we'll apply some frequency modulation, say 9 o'clock. And we can hear our pitch sweep, courtesy of envelope 2, followed by the pitch modulation. And we can change that pitch modulation to saw or square. And if we want that modulation happening throughout the sweep, just turn down the intro knob. OK, forgetting the VCO waveforms for the moment, you can also have pink noise as a mod source. And this is one of my favourite things to use for some real grainy movement within a patch. Before we get to that though, I'm going to reset the modulation amounts on VCO2 and the VCF to zero. Open the cutoff a bit, say one o'clock. Select noise as the mod source in VCO3. Remove the mod envelope setting, put that back to nil. And turn up the frequency modulation in VCO2 where Forgetting the tuning offset for a moment, you can hear the pitch start to get very slightly jumpy. Then we go to the fine tune of VCO2 and bring that oscillator back in tune with VCO1. Now, to get this all lovely and subtle, there's a bit of a balancing act to do between backing off the modulation frequency and then retuning the VCO. But when you get that sweet spot, it's totally worth it. And if we head back to VCO3, there's a couple more things we can do. Firstly, because we're using pink noise, and it's not dependent on our saw, sine or square, we can take it out of LFO rate mode. And that means we can reinforce both VCO1 and 2 with yet another wave from VCO3. Let's take a saw. Turn it up and tune it slightly sharp. Then we can add a degree of intro, not to the sound of VCO3 per se, but to ramp in the noise modulation. Finally, let's balance the VCOs so that 1 and 3 are similar, but 2, i.e. the one with our noise modulation, is slightly louder. Again, we'll need to tweak the VCO2 mod and pitch amounts to get something subtle but with some movement. Then, we can head to our VCF. Select envelope 2 as the mod source and tweak that envelope to taste. And this is before we add a bit of delay. and put OBE into polyphonic mode. And pan each SEM to a different location in the stereo field. Introduce subtle pitch modulation on VCO1 via LFO1.
you know it, you've lost yourself in a sonic soundscape. I'll look at how VCO3 can be used as an audio rate modulation source in the next tutorial. In the meantime, thanks for getting this far, and I hope some of this was useful.